thanks for coming. Thanks for having us. Uh, my name is Lukas Püringer. I work at NYU as a researcher and software engineer on uh, software supply chain security projects, one of them being the update framework. And I'm here with my friend Cairo from VMware. Hi, so my name is Cairo. I work uh, at VMware in the open source program office, uh, and I'm a member of the uh, security supply team. We work uh, with uh, upstream uh, open source products uh, in the security supply chain. Okay, um, we are going to talk about PEP 458, um, which is a specification to uh, secure PyPI downloads. Um, and yeah, let's take a look at the agenda of the talk. Uh, before we dive into PEP 458, uh, we'll, we'll briefly talk about package distribution, um, about how to secure it with the update framework just the basis for PEP 458. Uh, Cairo will talk um, or give us a couple of numbers about Warehouse, which is the software that powers PyPI. Uh, then we'll dive into details of PEP 458. Um, Cairo will talk about his integration journey, um, implementing the whole thing. And if we still have time, because that's a lot, um, we will talk about what's next. Okay, let's start with package distribution. Um, I probably don't have to tell you that Python runs everywhere. You have it on servers, on container clusters, on IoT de devices, um, really everywhere. It runs the world. Um, in order for it to run everywhere, you need a uh, distribution platform uh, where you get it from and some client that you use to get it. And usually you use pip install for that, and usually you get, or hopefully you get, the software that you want to download when you do pip install. Um, I say hopefully because the package distribution infrastructure is also a very attractive target for attackers, um, because they, they can, with a single compromise, uh, multiply that compromise to all the users, to thousands, millions of users uh, that run pip install. Um, so I guess we all agree that we somehow have to protect these packages. Uh, we have to make precautions for the event of a key compromise in the publishing infrastructure. And we have to do that at scale because uh, you rarely have one package that you try to download and um, you only need to protect that. Uh, but that package depends on other packages, which themselves depend on other packages. So you have this huge graph of dependencies. And we heard dependencies in the prior talk. Uh, so again, if anywhere deep down in that dependency graph you got a compromise, uh, that gets propagated, uh, propagated to like everywhere downstream and affects all the clients that download it. And, um, these things, have hap these things have happened. So while I don't know if everyone saw the prior talk, so uh, it hasn't happened to PyPI yet. Um, we are more worried about typo squatting in PyPI, but it can happen to PyPI. So we need to protect uh, key compromises in PyPI. Um, maybe I can have a, a raise of hands of uh, who can think of a successful um, compromise of publishing infrastructure in the recent past. Okay, uh, and who has heard of the name SolarWinds or SolarBurst? Okay, so these things really happen, so we need to find a solution, and one solution is to sign everything. Uh, cryptographic signatures really help to guarantee authenticity and integrity of your software artifacts. Um, but they are not enough. We have to think of other things as well. We have to make trust decisions at scale because if you get a signature, you also have to know which key to trust for that signature. And we have, again, um, prepare for the event of a key compromise. What do you do? How do you report it uh, to your users that the key should no longer be trusted? And then there are other problems uh, like freshness and consistency of the repository. 
And a good solution, a good generic solution for that is the Update Framework. It come, came out of um, research of secu um, security research of package managers um, almost 15 years ago, but it's still very relevant. Um, so Tuft works for every setup that has some notion of a repository service, uh, um, a content repository server, and some recurring clients that come and fetch software, but also try to update it. We heard in the, in the prior talk that you, like one of the key security um, actions that you can take is to update your software. So you don't only want to fetch once, but come back and update, update, update. Um, Tuff has built in protection for freshness, consistency, and integrity of software. It is resilient to compromise, so um, it both reduces the impact uh, of a compromise, and it also allows in-band recovery. Um, it does this by specifying a bunch of roles, different roles for different responsibilities in the content repos repository. So there's one for the integrity of the software artifacts. Um, there is one for the consistency of the overall um, software repository, one for freshness, and then there is one for the root of trust, which defines the signing keys. And roles are a rather abstract concept in Tuff, but it's actually pretty simple. They're all represented by one or more uh, metadata files that are signed with a cryptographic key. Before we go into more details, or we won't go into more details about Tuff right now, but um, later when we look at PEP458, how this works in the scope of PyPI. But before that, uh, Cairo will talk a little bit about Warehouse. So yeah, I'll give you an introduction about Warehouse because PEP458 uh, mainly uh, work in, in Warehouse, but what is Warehouse? So most uh, of people are not familiar with uh, the, the word, the name Warehouse, but as uh, the description says is, is a software that uh, powers PyPI. It's the, the solution for the, the, the repository, uh, the, the package index. Uh, so anytime that someone is running PyAP install uh, with the full uh, repository, it's going to uh, Warehouse because it goes to the Py uh, PI. So here are some numbers to, to share with you how important is Warehouse. It's uh, more than 380,000 uh, projects hosted there. It means also more than 600,000 uh, users. And daily, it serves more than 900 uh, terabytes and two billion of requests. So uh, there is a big impact uh, making a warehouse uh, safety. I will give back to my friend here. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, okay, let's look at PEP458. Uh, I already said it in the beginning of the talk. Um, PEP458 is sort of specification um, or enhancement proposal uh, for setting up a minimal tough design on PyPI. And um, the advanced, or the the security properties it gets from Tuff are that it makes storage and transport security non-critical, so you don't have to tr trust in the artifacts anymore. That they are fine, but you have additional metadata that you uh, can, w with, with which you can verify the artifacts. Uh, you get protection against rollback or freeze attacks that are um, attacks where an attacker pretends that there is no new software freeze attack or that like um, serves old software to you with a valid signature, um, but which might con um, contain vulnerabilities. Then it has this uh, great feature of in-band key revocation. Um, and in the case of a compromise, it limits, um, it limits the successfulness of the compromise to um, to certain expiration dates. That's what we call implicit revocation. Um, the PEP does not change any of the user flows, neither for the software uploaders, for the developers, nor for the clients. Um, it doesn't really have to change 
the way how you use PIP. Um, and something that we will talk a little bit in the end of the talk uh, is that it's a very important build building block for more complicated but uh, more secure designs for PyPI. Um, so let's take a look at how PEP458 um, uses TUF. So first of all, it um, defines these different roles represented by metadata uh, for the repository. It has a root role, um, which is the role that uh, provides the root of trust. It defines all the uh, allowed signing keys and signature thresholds uh, for any other role, including itself. Then it has these other roles that are um, that are responsible for freshness, consistency, and integrity of the artifacts. Um, and yeah, okay. Maybe so that you know the terminology, targets is the one that um, the targets role is responsible for integrity. Snapshot is the one responsible for the consistency and timestamp for freshness. Um, except for targets, those are maybe a little bit self-explaining. Um, the large advantage of having separate roles is that you can balance responsibility uh, with risk and availability of certain roles. Uh, so for instance, um, if you have a role that has high responsibility uh, but doesn't need to be available that much, you can minimize the risk of key compromise by putting that role offline. So for the root role, we only use offline signing keys. Uh, whereas the roles um, that need to be highly available because they sign on every upload of artifacts um, are at higher risk um, of being compromised because they're online. Um, so we try to minimize their responsibility. We don't like let those roles um, revoke keys, for instance. Um, then you can also, like another benefit of having separate roles, you can um, balance risk availability and expiration. So for the root role that is not at high risk of being compromised um, and does not need to be available that much, uh, or change that much, we can set long expiration intervals, whereas for the ones that need to sign like every day, many times, every second actually, we can have very short expiration time so that when they get compromised, the online key gets compromised, uh, an attacker can't use that compromised key for a long time. Um, and one more uh, feature of having separate roles is that we can have different um, signature threshold. So for the online key, a threshold doesn't make much sense because if you compromise one online key, you might as well compromise another one. Um, but for offline keys, we can, so the PEP recommends to have multiple key holders being appointed by the Python Software Foundation um, and um, an attacker needs to compromise the threshold of those keys to compromise the role. Um, and last but not least, with those different roles, we do a key revocation. When um, we need to change the key for these lower, uh, like these, these online roles, uh, we just change, change it in the root role, and the root gets shipped out to the client, and the client always knows which keys to trust. Um, one thing to mention, you might ask yourself why uh, these roles um, at the bottom are in one uh, square or, or in one rectangle um, and have only one key. Why do you need separate roles? Uh, for this setup, we actually wouldn't need that many, like these three separate roles, but for other setups like the more advanced um, protection that we'll talk about later, uh, this setup makes sense. Um, Okay, before we talk about how Cairo is implementing this in PyPI, um, some info, like a few data points about uh, the tough tooling that is available. Uh, we have a, a Python tough reference implementation, which both shows, like has, has the goal of helping to understand the tough specification. Um, 
but is also usable, usable and actually used in production by large company, uh, companies. Um, it has two parts. One is the client downloader, which is basically an off-the-shelf solution for most package managers because um, the specification has like very clearly defined workflows for the client, and they are the same for many different repository setups. Um, the repository side, on the other hand, varies a lot between different implementations, so that's also why um, the, the Python Tough tooling has very powerful, uh, very powerful tools for the repository, but also very um, well. You still need to know Tough very well to use them, um, and. Uh, Cairo knows about that, and he has struggled with that while implementing PEP 458. Thank you, Lex. So, um, yeah, I will share here a bit my journey uh, about implementing uh, this, uh, this PEP. So, I joined recently, a few months ago, um, the open source program office at VMware, and as a, my goal in that team would be implementing the PEP458. So the first, uh, uh, how I start with that was uh, reading the, the very good spe specification that uh, Tuff has, um, and they start contributing with a Python Tuff project. That uh, the Python Tuff project is uh, the one that uh, Lucas mentioned that provides the metadata API and the uh, download client. So uh, they, the, the tough team that Lucas uh, is, team, is part, they are about to release uh, the, the release 1.0 from um, Python uh, Tough, and uh, I was following it very close and doing uh, some contributions. So when I start, uh, say, let's say that when I saw that the, the, the Python Tough was in very good uh, shape, I started the implementation for that. For, uh, PEP 458, and uh, I started, uh, when I started, my difficulty was the PEP is, is huge, the description of the PEP is huge, but there is no, um, a lot of information about the design implementation, how to implement TUF to the warehouse, and as I, I shared, uh, warehouse is, is, is huge, it's big software. Uh, and the security there is very important. So I struggle a bit to, to implement it, but as you can see, we have a, I have a pull request on review there. Uh, I need to mention also that the exercising of PEP 548 for the Tough team was very interesting because they were able to construct a very good metadata API and give you a lot of flexibility for who want to implement Tough in your repository software or uh, infrastructure. So I really uh, went to Python Tuff, get help to, to implement it and use this metadata API. And yeah, we have uh, something uh, open to review for uh, the PyPI uh, maintainers. And uh, here it's a, just a small demonstration about uh, PIP and the warehouse working with, uh, uh, sorry, people working with warehouse uh, with tough enable. Then you can see uh, here in the, the verbose mode that it's using the, the metadata. Um, so this PIP version is a, a POC that I got from another a colleague, and I ju just did some change, but we can, let's say, prove that it works. Uh, I need to say that the implementation, this pull request that we have now, is not the entire implementation. It just enabled PEP 458 to warehouse in development mode. So you are able to just run it in your machine. <laughs> but uh, it's a I start. So what's the status now? Yeah, I just left to PyPI folks a huge pull request that uh, is hanging there because it's really, really hard to review. It's a lot of code. But uh, now with some discussions, we are improving this. Lucas is someone that uh, helped me 
to um, reduce this code, make it more uh, easy to review, uh, and that will be one of our uh, next steps. So what we want to do now next, uh, here I'm sharing the status with you, where we are now and what we want to do. Yeah, now we have Tough and PEP458 working in warehouse in develop mode, but this is just at least for me now. But we want to start connect the flows for warehouse to the, to the, the connect the tough to the warehouse uh, flows. It means that when someone upload a new um, a package, new version of package, it will uh, populate the all metadata. And uh, also when we want to implement uh, the PIP, that is the POC, we want to have it uh, live, of course. And uh, in the end, of course, when everything is working, the, the hard part is whole out it to production. So, but I might say that as Python users, uh, we'll be not affect, affected by uh, the, the way to use uh, PyPI or, or for developers to push with it, but uh, the background will be that. So I'll get back to Lucas to to share about next. Yeah, even further down the road, we have some plans for PyPI. So I mentioned earlier that PEP458 is a really important building block because by itself, it already gives you a lot of security guarantees, but it is still uh, sort of susceptible to um, uh, compromises of the online publishing infrastructure. Like it already mitigates those compromises in various ways and it allows to recover from them. But still, if the online keys are compromised, um, an attacker can serve, um, vulner can serve arbitrary code. So there is this addition to PEP 458, which is called PEP 480. Um, it uses the same basic metadata layout. It has the root metadata for the signing keys. It has uh, um, timestamp, snapshot, and targets, top level targets metadata um, for these pro other properties. And then it spans this whole new delegation tree, trust delegation tree uh, on the targets metadata, uh, which creates trust namespaces for developers. So it says which keys can be trusted to, this, to sign specific uh, projects uploaded to PyPI. So certain keys for Django, certain keys for NumPy, and so on. And the signatures are then actually provided with offline keys by the developers. Um, so then even if the online publishing infrastructure gets compromised, uh, an attacker cannot serve arbitrary um, software. Uh, so this really uh, protects against online key compromise. Um, it still does not change any, any workflows for the, for the client downloader. They still just do pip install and are not bothered with any of this at all but it does change developer workflows. So they need to handle private keys. Uh, we somehow need to establish this initial trust between the developer and PyPI. Uh, developers need to somehow create tough metadata that will then be um, pushed to PyPI in order to uh, serve it to the users. So there are a lot of challenges with this, um, and PEP458 already is complicated, so um, we will first focus on uh, finalizing PEP 458 and then uh, continue with 480. Um, and if you want to follow the developments, uh, there is a new discussion thread on Python Discuss. Um, those slides will be available online so you can check, check the URL uh, later. Um, if you're interested in TUF in general, um, it is not only concerned with PyPI, we work with many other software uh, updaters and package managers. Uh, check out the website, uh, visit us on the Slack channel in the CNCF uh, workspace. Tough is a CNCF project, for those of you who know the CNCF. Uh, or drop an email on our mailing list. Um, yeah, and with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention and um, open the floor for questions.
Thank you. Thank you for the talk. Uh, I just wanted to understand how the two framework uh, works with uh, things like build reproducibility. I mean, uh, in the current model, uh, do you understand right that if you compromise uh, the way of getting signatures or keys, um, you can still sign malware or something? And um, uh, it seems like in this framework, you can specify the target files. So what do you do of those packages which target files are quite dynamic? Um, for example, uh, machine learning models or something like that, which have very expressive setup.py, uh, which take decision based on the CPU feature supported on your uh, target computer, etc. Uh, how does TUF works for that? Okay, I'm not sure I understand every, uh, understood everything. The first part was about reproducible builds, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, Tough is not really concerned with uh, reproducible builds, so it provides metadata where you put one signature for a software artifact. Um, but uh, at the same research lab where we developed Tough, we developed a different project called Intoto, which is basically Tough's sister project, um, and it deals with like prior steps to the publishing step of the software supply chain. And it also lets you attest for reprodu reproducibility of a software build, and it works very well together with um, Tough. So uh, the software company Datadog actually uses Tough and Intoto to protect their entire supply chain. And the second part was about uh, CVE scans. Um, I didn't fully understand it, what it, you were it's asking. A, it's about very dynamic packages such as TensorFlow, or um, Yuging Face, uh, which requires to download binary models based on some very dynamic decisions, uh, CPU fixtures, uh, internationaliz internationalization, localization, extra, extra. Okay, and what are tough? How does tough handle those? Because uh, you cannot specify the target files. Do you want to answer that question? Yeah. You have something? Maybe I, 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 I'm not fully understood, but I, what I can say that. Uh, in that case, we'll be just a target sign it in the repository, and the, it Tuff and the warehouse, for example, will not. Uh, they don't deal with the, the name of the package. This kind of thing. It's just about uh, having a metadata that can reference to the target files. So if you have multiple target files there that will be uh, uh, linked by a CPU or any kind of configuration, yeah. it's just about the file that is being uh, indexed and doesn't matter more, too much for that. Yeah. Okay, it makes sense. Okay. Thank you very much. Hi, thank you for the amazing talk. It was very interesting. Uh, uh, maybe you mentioned it, uh, but I'm, um, I'm curious about the um, um, like once uh, the implement implementation is ready and out, how are you going to handle the transition uh, for those repositories that are not anymore maintained, like the, the backward uh, compatibility, how, how it will yeah. look like? You want to say? Yeah. You can go. Yeah, actually, um, let's say if you see the development uh, version now, uh, Actually, it uh, doesn't care uh, too much what we have, what it's uh, back, uh, old package versions. Actually, we'll just get what we have in the database now from uh, warehouse and create the metadata for all entire, uh, entire data that is there. For now, is that our decision? But uh, we don't know if uh, when we go for the whole out, we would uh, do like a kind of a cleanup or just the classify package that will be in the metadata first. We don't have a clear transition yet. We still like uh, trying to attach stuff to the warehouse and to the flows. Then the, the whole out will be something to be planned with the PSF folks. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, maybe one thing to add. So for PEP458, there, it specifies this thing called back signing, where we just like sign all the packages that are already there. Um, for PEP 480, it's a bit more complicated. This targets delegation tree is actually not accurate, 
So it's more complicated in order to support this transition from unsigned to signed packages. Um, I left it out to not confuse you more and because it's not security relevant. Uh, but if you um, search PEP 480, um, you'll have uh, exact like all the details of the delegation that also allow you to transition from uh, the status quo to this model. Yeah, then, then for this one, we will have more impact about projects and uh, uh, users because we are saying that we have the developers did to sign. So. Yeah. No question? Hi there. Uh, great talk, thanks. Um, so actually with PEP 4A, this, this looks really nice. So as a company, can you basically whitelist a series of keys saying, oh, we want, we allow, you know, Beautiful Soup, Django, we want to whitelist those keys, then our own private keys, so that we don't really care where the packages come from, and sort of th that as long as they're signed with these keys, we'll only accept those packages. Can, can you repeat your question and speak closer to the microphone? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, so just wondering, with PEP 480, it looks like it opens up the possibility of, uh, as a, in a company, basically having a white list of signing keys that they trust. So they're saying, okay, we trust the Django developers, we check their key, we trust NumPy, we have our own corporate key, and then we just want to reject everything else that isn't signed by those when we install packages. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Great. Enjoy lunch, everyone. Thanks. Thank you.